Uh, my name is Paul Redemaker. I'm a technical lead um, on a project that we are announcing today. Uh, so you guys are the first to hear about it. Um, if you were at Michael Jones' talk um, in the previous session in, in this room over next door, then you, uh, then you uh, saw a preview of this. Um, we are announcing a new API um, for Google Earth. And to start off, um, I want to talk for just a minute about um, oh, and actually, before I start, I was specifically instructed um, for everybody to be seated if you're in the back. Um, so uh, Google Earth API. So stepping back for a second, uh, two great success stories that Google has had over the last two or three years are Google Maps and Google Earth. And because you guys are here, I assume that you're um, Maps users and hopefully Map developers um, that are here to uh, learn about some advanced techniques. So uh, Google Maps, two years ago, if you rewind, if you think back to um, before Google Maps in February of 2005, before it was released, um, our concept of an online map was pretty different. So an online map was something that you used to get directions from point A to point B, or to uh, find, let's say, the 10 nearest Walmarts to, to your zip code. That was about it, basically these traditional uses of maps. Um, then Google Maps API came out, um, and um, people started developing new applications on top of Google Maps. Um, some people, myself included, before Google Maps uh, came out. Um, so uh, if you guys have seen housingmaps.com, that's my website, the Craigslist plus um, Google Maps thing. Um, but then Google Maps API was officially released. Google bless the idea of people writing new applications on top of their core technology. Um, and since then, we've seen there's the official number is upwards or over 150,000 sites, which are unique applications built on top of Google Maps. And what's interesting about this is that these are not traditional mapping applications. These are instances of people taking their own data and their own personally relevant content and overlaying it on top of this core technology. In parallel with that, we have uh, Google Earth, which has also been a great success story. Um, because again, if you think back four years ago or so before um, Earth, before Google Earth came out, um, you wouldn't really imagine that it'd be possible to fly anywhere in the world and zoom in and see you know, what any place on this planet looks like in high resolution. Um, and now we take that for granted. So Google Earth, this powerful technology over here, Google Maps API over here, there's this missing piece, which is that people cannot develop their own applications on top of Google Earth and overlay their own personally relevant content and really just build brand new applications. So yes, you can create KML files with, with Earth and you can post them on the web and then people can uh, launch the Earth client and then see these files, but it's still a different experience than Maps API. So, Today we announce, uh, let me show this hello world example. So this is Google Earth now as of today, and you can run this yourself. I'll give you a URL in just a second. This is Earth in a browser, and it is the full Earth uh, rendering engine with a JavaScript API, um, and it's hardware accelerated, and let's see. So you know, I can tilt, I can... Uh, do all the fancy things, zoom in, etc. What's really cool about this, I think, for um, for developers, is if I show you the source code for this. If uh, this cooperates, so this is the source code. This is the entire HTML for that page. So you can see at the top there, um, you know, some you load. JavaScript file in the middle. The key line is google.earth.create instance. You pass it a div, a region on your screen, on your uh, in your page that you want to be taken over by Earth, and then Earth creates um, an instance of itself in that div. This is the same programming model as Maps API, where you pass in a div and you say new gmap at this div. Um, the difference here is that you have this native component. So this is actually um, C++. This is the Earth um, application is not implemented in JavaScript. It just communicates with JavaScript. So 
If you have a Windows box, um, and we're very sorry, this is right now still Windows only, or Window only. Uh, Windows only, Mac and Linux coming soon. Um, but that's the URL, code.google.com slash APIs slash Earth. So you can download it right now, and you're going to see um, example pages um, and uh, full documentation, et cetera. Um, so this is the team uh, that's worked on this. Um, dedicate team to bring the browser aspect to Earth. And also, what's interesting is um, we're building on top of Google Earth, so every feature that, every new feature that comes into Earth, um, you should expect to see either immediately or soon in the browser version. So, for example, um, we recently released in Earth 4.3 3D buildings, um, and those are now on the web. Our goal here, our primary goal is to bring Earth to users instead of having users um, needing to go to Earth by going to a double clicking on an icon on their desktop or on their start menu or whatever. Uh, just like now Google Maps is on you know, a billion web pages, right? Uh, it's everywhere. You look on the web, you see a Google Map, and you don't have to do anything special to see a map. It's up to the creator of that web page to decide whether it made sense for them to display the data uh, using a map. The same thing is now possible with Earth. So as a content creator, you can now embed it. Um, it's our goal to open up as much of the Earth data and functionality as possible, as quickly as possible. So we're not going to hold back, and we're, um, we're going to try. You know, our goal is not to keep some parts of Earth for ourselves. Um, it's to let all of you guys build something cool with it. We intend this to be a lightweight, fast web component. What we don't want to happen is for people to see that there's a page that uses Earth, and they're like scared to go to that page, right? Because you know it'll use up too much memory, it'll be slow or whatever. So we want this to be um, fast and ubiquitous. And um, the API is designed with JavaScript developers in mind. And th the final point is that this is intended to be compatible with existing Maps API sites. So. If you have a Maps API site, then um, this should work for you pretty easily. And I'll talk about that more in just a minute. So the installation uh, for, for your users, if you put this on your web page, here's what somebody would see if they don't have the plugin installed. Um, so they would automatically, we would display this image, and they click on, the, on, on that button, and then they can run off and, and grab the plugin and installs um, pretty quickly. Um, and there's a network effect too, so you know hopefully you wouldn't be worried about putting this on your web page for fear that your users don't have it, because with every new application that uh, that embeds this, um, the number of users will grow. And just as a reference point, the current Google Earth has over 250 million installations, so that's a uh, large number. Uh, so we expect this is going to go pretty wide also. So. Um, let me talk about the API. And from here on in the talk, I'm going to kind of go back and forth between demos and, uh, and uh, JavaScript examples. Uh, so hopefully a good number of you are JavaScript programmers and will enjoy this. So in designing this, we borrowed, um, well, we did not take the Maps API and implement the Maps API for Earth. Um, because Earth already has a language that understands, and that's KML. So if you've created KML files or just you know, saved out a KML file, there's a specific object uh, model that that file contains. So that's what our plugin understands. Um, and then also, we borrowed very heavily from the W3C DOM model, which is the standard way that um, objects are created on the web, and you manipulate objects in arrays, and the way objects are parented to each other on the web. So for, for developers that are familiar with web programming, uh, this should feel very familiar. It's kind of this, it's the same language. So let me, um, okay. There we go. So let me, uh, sorry. let's run over and look at the documentation here real quick. So this is the entire API, and when you first create an instance of the plugin, you're going to get a handle to this, uh, to this object. Its type is GE plugin, and it has this whole 
list of uh, constructor, constructor methods, so you can construct different camel objects. So you can create um, place marks and points and geometry, which is, uh, can be lines or polygons or, line or rings or 3D models. Um, create cameras, create um, basically any, just about any 3D primitive that you need. Um, and if we take a look at uh, just one of these, let's see here. Uh, so for example, the KML overlay, just to show you a quick example. If you looked at the KML um, documentation, uh, let's see here. So this is the official KML reference. So basically, um, you could take any object inside here, which is the file format for KML, and there's a one-to-one -one mapping, um, more or less, one to 0.99 mapping uh, between this and the JavaScript API. So, um, so you should be able to go back and forth pretty easily. So let's jump straight to uh, some cool samples here. So if you go to code.google.com slash APIs slash Earth, you'll see a link to this page, which is our little um, online JavaScript explorer. Uh, so we've created a single instance of Earth. And uh, down here at the bottom, we can load in little JavaScript snippets and uh, execute them in real time. So the very simplest would be like, let's move a camera. increase this so you can see it. So I create a camera object here. Um, or actually, I, I grab the current view, which is this first line here. I change the latitude and longitude of the current view, and then I reapply that view. Um, and we manipulate the camera. I can create, um, let's see here. I can create place marks. So this is the code. Um, to create a single marker. So if you're familiar to Maps API programming, they're called markers in, in Maps. Uh, in KML, they're called place marks, and the object structure is actually different. So this would look unfamiliar to you from a Maps perspective. Um, and it's, it's a few more steps in the Earth world uh, to create a, a place mark, but that's OK, because you can wrap all these. We've provided all the examples for how you follow this object model. So you can wrap these in a single function, for example. Let's just do that right now. So, uh, so I'm going to create a function here. OK, so I just wrapped that bit of that snippet of code and assigned it to a new function, create place mark. So now I can invoke that function here. And you see that every time I, I click the button, I get a new place mark. Um, this is JavaScript, so I can do fun things like set timeout, uh, create, actually, let's do set interval, create place mark. Okay, so does anyone know what that'll do? So this will fire off this function every 500 milliseconds. And uh, I'm not getting all these little place marks here. Um, I'm going to reload the page here, and I want you to see what happens when I reload. First of all, um, it's going to stop uh, creating these place marks because it's going to reset the JavaScript context. But then also, it loaded pretty quickly, right? Um, so that was 0.36 seconds to start to, uh, to refresh, 0.2 seconds to refresh. So we paid a lot of attention to page refresh time. And in fact, this refresh is a lot faster than it will start up the first time. Um, I mean, you know. The plugin The plugin does not have its own JavaScript engine. The, pl the plugin communicates from the built-in browser engine. So it's got a, a JavaScript API that your browser's JavaScript engine communicates with. Um, and what I'm showing here with the, these fast refreshes is that it's very common on, um, on map sites when you show some information, you'll have links to external pages. And usually, you want your user to go to this external page and then maybe come right back. 
so by refreshing quickly, uh, your users won't be frustrated by going to another page and then you know, having to wait for, for Earth to start up again because it's, it's basically ready to go. Uh, let's create some more KML objects here. So I've got a screen overlay. Um, a screen overlay is just a, an image that's displayed on the screen. And this can be, um, it, it could be something on your local drive, although only if you're, well, actually, that really wouldn't work because we've clamped down on security on the plugin where it can't load uh, local files. And that's because, um, uh, you know, it's, that's a basic tenet of, of browser security. You, you don't want a web component to be able to get into your, you know, your drive and steal your files. But you can uh, link this screen overlay to any file on the web. So here I'm just linking to the Google logo, and I click Run Code. Oh, let me show the code real quick. So it's basically this right here. I set the uh, center point of the, I'm basically telling Earth, here's where I want the center point of the image to go on screen and how I want to rotate it. And uh, press this a number of times. And uh, get the screen all dirty. So let me refresh again and start from scratch. Earth also has um, ground overlays, which are um, images that are directly applied on the, on the globe. So I can run this here. And uh, these images can be JPEGs and be uh, GIF files. They can be PNGs. Uh, they can have transparency. You can apply color to them. So, so they're, they're, they're pretty flexible. And if you've seen, again, if, you, if you're a user of Earth, then you know these are the same tools you have to play with in Earth. But now you can control them procedurally. I'll show you a couple of polygons and some, uh, some color stuff here. So uh, I can create line strings. Let's see. So this is just a very simple little zigzag here. I can apply color and style my strings. String, uh, this this line could be anything. I'm just here drawing um, a few simple points. I can create uh, polygons, so shapes on the ground, and these are pretty simple shapes, but uh, just little demos. So Earth is pretty powerful; I can handle much more complicated than this. And uh, let's see what else we have here. So let's. Load a 3D model. So let me zoom in here. So this is a very, very, very simple little model. This is a Collada file, which is basically an XML-based file format um, that's very widely supported right now. And it, this is nothing more than simply a Collada file on the web. And down here, we just said, um, we set, we created a, um, what's it called? We created a model object and set the href of that model to this file.dae, that's the Collada file format, that XML, and loaded it. And uh, let's see what happens. So we can, you know, we can create a bunch of these. And, uh, you know, this is the place where you insert your own imagination, you know, all of the 3D content that you could place on here. So you can imagine. If this were like a real estate website, for example, um, you know, have actual database. These, are, if it's new construction, for example, you'll have uh, uh, a map showing an empty plot of ground. You can import the actual model files for houses that are going to be built there and show them, um, etc. We support network links, which are a, uh, a way with KML. This is a very simple network link file. A way in KML to uh, to fetch files, uh, KML files over the web. Um, so those are the basic uh, primitives. Actually, let me show you one or two other things. So the plugin has a parse KML function, and uh, hopefully you guys can see that at the bottom. I'm sorry, the resolution of the projector is not very high. But here at the bottom, I'm parsing a big long string of KML. And when I execute this, it's the Pentagon. Uh, so this came out could have been anything. The interesting thing also here is that if I create some object, so let's say I create this place mark, um, 
So I just created this placemark object. I can say placemark.getKML, and I will actually have the full uh, serialized version of, of that thing I just created. So what's interesting about this, okay, and you're thinking, how do I, you know, what's this good for? Um, you can have Earth on your web page and procedurally let people uh, create, you know, stuff, right? Whatever that is. Let's say you want to show uh, jogging trails or something, and you could have an application that lets people click on the map and uh, and uh, and draw, you know, their favorite jogging trail, for example. Well, then you want to store that on your own website. You can invoke this get KML function directly on the objects, and you'll have this string of KML that then you can send back through an HTTP, XML HTTP request back to your server. You can save that. You can save it out as KML. Um, and basically, we're, we're making it easy for you to, to save things out to files and, and read them back. And I'll show you a few more things here. So we support uh, events on... Uh, on objects. So I just attach an event listener to here, and you can see here on the right side of the screen when I click, um, it gave me information about the click point. So I can trap for events when, when you click on objects, um, when you move over the objects, uh, when you mouse down, mouse up, etc. And not only can you apply event handlers directly on the objects, but you can also apply event handlers on the Earth itself. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to run this little bit of JavaScript. So I just uh, attached a couple event handlers, and I'm just clicking here. You can see on the right side of the screen, it's telling me where on the, on the globe I click. So I'll show you a simple, kind of cheesy little application that I did uh, last night. Um, so here I'm just listening for mouse downs and mouse moves to see uh, uh, where the mouse is moving. And, uh, and every time I get a latitude and longitude, I am going to add, add a point to a line string. And I'm going to use the built-in KML random color functionality. And I'm going to turn the earth into a groovy 70s thing here. Um, some nice flower power. OK. So. Oops. Okay. So now, come on. That's, that's got to make you happy, right? <laughs> oh, and I could also, again, show KML. So this is what I actually created. I could save this out. So you can imagine, like, an application, uh, you know, you let a bunch of users log into Earth at once, and they all draw on the screen, and, uh, and then your website intercepts what they just created and, you know, kind of, I don't know, just draw all over the planet. Um, so let me show you, let me just jump straight to a couple of uh, more demos here. Um, first a couple of dry ones and then one that's a little more fun. So here, this just shows some of the different features that you can choose to use from Earth. So let's say you want just a plain window Uncluttered window, um, that's actually what you get at startup. Um, if you want navigation control, then one line of JavaScript gets you that. Uh, you might want latitude, longitude lines. Uh, and again, th this, let me go ahead and show you the source code for this. Firefox does not want you to see the source code. It, it's very short. Um, so, yeah, I don't know why it's not working. Um, Firefox. Uh, overview map, um, scale. So you can see here at the bottom, let me turn off the grid. At the bottom left, you see a little scale command. Um, this one's pretty cool. This next one's pretty cool to me. Um, it's atmosphere. And I'm going to turn off atmosphere. And um, I don't exactly know why you would want to turn off atmosphere, but, you know, that's really up to you. If you don't want to, don't. Um, what's actually interesting to me when I, when I was playing with this the last couple of days is the fact that um, 
turning it off kind of shows you how far this technology has come in the last, you know, just the last couple of years, because um, Earth from a distance used to look like this, and uh, and that was awesome, right? Um, and in fact, if you go back even a few more years, like like if you go back like 10 years and you you're on your million dollar SGI machine um, and you see a globe with with a texture like. Okay, this is as far as you can zoom in, right? Like, like that's it. That's Earth, and that was amazing even back then. Um, but now we got this cool atmosphere, and now this is this is cool. Um, and in a couple of years, this will be boring, right? we will be like, oh yeah, of course it needs to look like that. And uh, you know, where's my, uh, you know, where's my actual, uh, you know, ocean waves or something like that? Um, I, I can't hear. Right click on the white, on which part? Oh, right here. Oh, I see, I see. Oh, okay. So, yes. Hey, that worked. There we go. View source. Okay, here's the source code. Thank you. Um, it's mostly HTML. So down here we just have a few checkboxes. And up here we grab the, uh, the earth options object and we say options set status bar visibility, set grid visibility. Um, Everything you turn on and off in the API is set whatever visibility or just set visibility. So we tried as much as possible. Um, we kind of sweated over consistency and try to make everything um, uh, nice and clean for you guys. Um, I can actually, this last one is just turning off mouse navigation. Uh, I guess that still works. But I can, when I click on the globe, no, nothing happens. So if you want to create your own way of controlling the navigation and your own way of driving around, you can do that. And in fact, I can show you that right now. Uh, so this is San Francisco. And um, this is just a little small app that takes WSAD, which is you know your standard game controls, and, uh, and adds a little bounce, lets you look up and around. Um, so this, this navigation mode here, this is all JavaScript. So this is JavaScript. Um, every frame, just updating. I mean, we don't have collision detection, so um, <laughs> it's just kind of cool. Uh, you know, I was actually looking at this and thinking, I want to turn off collision detection in real life um, so I can get around town faster. Um, so that would that'd be very nice. Um, but OK, so you can, you can uh, control the camera however you want. And let's see here. Show you a couple more samples here. As I said before, we want this to be um, lightweight and, um, and unconstrained, right? So when you create a, a 2D map, when you put a 2D map on your website, y you might have more than one. And furthermore, you might have 10 tabs open in your browser, and you know maybe a few of them have maps on them, and you know you don't think about it, you don't care. Um, what you definitely, as a user, don't want to happen is when you go to open up a map, uh, you know, like a Google map, um, it, it dies on you because you know there's you know there's another one open, and you can only have one open at a time or something like that. Um, so we we let you have more than one. Um, and in this case, uh, these are two completely separate instances of Earth. And we are listening for mouse events in one. And we're basically watching where the, the camera goes in the one. And we are, uh, uh, these are two instances of the plugin in one web page. And as you change one, the other, we, we control the other. Um, there's a demo, actually, I don't, I don't have it here, but uh, somebody in house built a demo where it just takes, uh, uh, well, imagine the same thing, except the one on the right is offset by like, you know, a meter in this way. And then you just look at it and you cross your eyes and you try not to get a headache, but it looks 3D, like for real. Um, so that's very cool. Um, I should have had it here and then, you know, you guys could all like do this thing and get your eyes to defocus, get a headache. Um, let's see what else we can show here. Let's go to milk truck. 
Okay, so this, this is our, our biggest application. You might have seen this at Michael Jones' talk in the previous session. So we're showing off a lot of things here. Um, um, we have this 3D model in the middle that is actually not hosted on this in the same location as the web page. Um, so the web page right, right here is google.com slash earth slash plugin examples milk truck. Um, the 3D model for this truck is actually in 3D warehouse. So if you've seen that, it's a, uh, it's a Google service. It's a repository where people can upload uh, 3D files that are created um, uh, usually through SketchUp, uh, which is Google's 3D modeling program. Um, so here, we are actually fetching the model directly from SketchUp, right? which has a couple of implications. Number one, if you create some cool app that has a lot of 3D content, you, know, you don't want to have all the files on your own server for, uh, you know, for bandwidth reasons or, or just uh, you don't want it to crash if a large number of users come to your site. Uh, you can host them in 3D Warehouse. Just upload your file and it'll be there. Um, and number two, 3D Warehouse has a ton of 3D models already. So you can, you can go there and, uh, and just peruse what's available and you know, import them and build your own applications out of it. Uh, so this is one that we built ourselves. It says milk on it because it is a milk truck. And, uh, and we can drive around. This is the Google campus down in Mountain View. Um, and this is illegal. Um, and let me go up to San Francisco. And the gray buildings, it's, it's, uh, it's, loading, um, it's loading textures. So if I, if I stood still and looked at it, um, you'll see, if I sit here for a few seconds, you'll see the textures start to, uh, to pour in, um, and the models also. I should actually make my way to the Moscone Center. It's, great. it's around here somewhere. Um, this is, so this application, this is, uh, <laughs> and, a, and this is, uh, you, you can't steer in midair, okay? I, I just added that, which makes it realistic. <laughs> um, but I could I could drive out to uh, let's let's just drive out to Alcatraz. What, what the hell? Um, oh yes, this has a special you know water thing going. Um, okay, so what's what's interesting about this is that. Um, <laughs> whoops. Okay, I think I lost my camera. Okay, I'm like uh, way out of range here. Um, what's interesting about this is this is all JavaScript. Okay, so this is just um, a, a ton of calls to set position on this 3D model and then set position on the camera to follow. Um, there's also a little shadow underneath, so that's a ground overlay that I was showing before, um, you know, which adds a lot. Um, we have a little math3d.js library. Okay, we need to increase gravity or something. Um, we have a little math 3D library, so we're doing JavaScript, we're doing full matrix multiplications in JavaScript, which, by the way, would not have been possible just a few years ago. So this is both showing how far, um, you know, a plugin like this, you know, and, and how far Earth has come, but it's also showing that the browser is, is really just so advanced from where we all thought it was just a few years ago. Um, and it's getting faster all the time. Um, one last interesting point here. I mentioned that we have uh, JavaScript callbacks, so you can have your own JavaScript function be called at certain, at certain points. Um, this is using the frame end callback, which is you can set a JavaScript function that's called before every single frame is, uh, is rendered. So if this is rendering, say, 60 times a second, then let's not drive through the buildings anymore. Then, then, then 60 times a second, we're calling a JavaScript function, which is setting the position and all that. Um, so again, JavaScript is a lot more powerful than maybe um, you might have thought. And let's see what else I can show here. Let me show. Let me go back to my SDK and show something that's going to be, I think, of special importance to Maps API developers. And then I'll spend a couple minutes talking about Maps API itself. So I'm going to zoom in here. Just to create. 
a little place mark. And then I'm going to invoke this code. Actually, let me move this out of the way here. Invoke this code, which opens a balloon. So Google Earth, um, the, the, the standalone version of Google Earth has balloons, and those balloons have HTML. And it's actually a limited subset of HTML. So what we've done here is inside the balloons, we support a uh, basically all of HTML. And, and when I say basically, I actually mean all of HTML. Um, more than just CSS, OK? So what we're actually doing is that HTML does not belong to the plugin. And for most practical purposes, the plugin, uh, like the Google Earth, does not really need to know what's inside that balloon. That balloon is actually being rendered on the same web page as everything else. So I was trying to think, well, how do I uh, prove this to you guys? So I'm going to prove it like this. I'm going to select up here, and I'm going to drag down to select the page. OK? You see that I've actually selected that. OK, so this is living inside the same web page. Um, so that's why I say, you know, it's not like most HTML. It is whatever HTML is inside the browser. And furthermore, for better or for worse, it's whatever browser quirks are already inside, you know, inside. So if you're an IE, right, you're an Internet Explorer, you're going to have slightly different positioning inside your balloons than if you were in Firefox. And that sounds like maybe that's a bad thing. Um, but it's actually a good thing um, because this is, we want this to be compatible with Maps API sites. And when you, when you work in a Maps API site, you just have pure JavaScript and you have uh, DOM objects and you have you know, elements that you're putting on screen. And your web page already has to deal with browser quirks. Um, so what we do here is whatever you made work in Maps API, we're going to make that work in Earth. So the question is, is this a div on top of the plugin? That's not quite it, but it's close enough. Um, um, and let's see here. One feature here, one, one uh, way that this would be useful, uh, I just want to show you this real quick here. So I, I'm going to name that image foo, okay? Just give it a random name, okay? And I'm just going to do that so that I can, um, let's see here. I just give it a random name so that I can change the image. So document.getElementById foo.source. So this is exactly how you would change an image just in pure JavaScript. And it changed the image in there. So what's this used for? Um, you can imagine, um, well, any, any, any place where you want interaction inside the balloon, let's say you want to have a star feature inside the balloon or something like that, or maybe people tag, or people have things that you know vote up or vote down on some content you're displaying or something like that. So you can basically do anything inside, inside the balloon. Um, and it gets even better. So let me show you the next thing here. Oh, actually, no. Before I show you the next thing, let me show you the next, next thing. A um, couple of fun things. Uh, let's see here. One more here. Okay, this was um, a single line of JavaScript. Well, okay, one or more lines of JavaScript. So one line of JavaScript here, if you see this line right here, options, set map type, map type sky, and we loaded Google Sky, which is a fairly recent uh, feature. Um, and here you have access to all the imagery that we expose in, 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 in Google Sky. Um, this code down here was just to zoom in uh, here. And when you're in sky mode, you still have access to all the KML primitives. So you can still draw lines and create place marks and import 3D geometry. So uh, you know what? I have not tried this, but let's import geometry. Is that weird? Yeah, that, that may not like it. I, I don't think you want to import geometry there. OK, but I can create place marks and, uh, again, draw overlays and lines. So these are kind of ugly lines, but you could imagine, um, you know, 
You want to draw your own constellations? You have your idea of what constellations need to look like? Well, you can. Is that a question? Could you show how to integrate with Maplets? Okay, so the question was how to integrate with Maplets. I'll, I'll talk about that in about 30 seconds. Um, and that's Maplets and APIs. And I'm actually not going to show that specifically, but something very close. Um, so just to wrap up on this, uh, Google Sky. So for any astronomers in the, in, in the audience, you've had this data. You know, you've seen Google Sky now for a few months. And maybe you wanted to play with it and create something brand new. Um, you know, we're not telling you what you can build with it. You can build whatever you want. Um, it's our job just to make whatever you imagine possible in here. So the question uh, was about Maps API. So let's talk about that for a few minutes. Um, One hundred fifty thousand uh, is officially the number. It's a little higher than that in real life. Um, there's one hundred fifty thousand Maps API sites out there, um, you know, and they all use like, the current Maps API, right? So we want to let them be Google Earth uh, sites, and not necessarily that they become like now exclusively Google Earth, but they, they should be like two D or three D, and we don't want that to be a lot of work for them. So I'm going to show you the source code for this first. This is a, uh, just a, that's it. That's the whole page. Um, most of it is comments. Um, this, this is online, too. If you go to uh, the official URL that I'll show at the end, you'll, you'll, you'll see all these code samples. Um, this is all 99% existing Maps API code to get a place mark, a balloon, and a line. There's one new line in there, and that's map, add map type G satellite 3D map. Um, and in, in Google Maps, there's, there's several different map types. There's a map satellite, there's hybrid, and uh, we just kind of, we've been rolling them out, right? So when hybrid uh, became possible, um, developers just got it. So now, as of today, developers just have access to this if they add that single line, and then they'll see up here, you see Maps Highlight, and this little Earth button, so they would, you click that, and uh, well, right now it's loading the plugin. So they see the same thing. Okay. Yeah, so we, we think this is gonna be pretty huge. What's, what we did here is we, we basically caught, we intercepted um, um, everything you do in the 2D world, and we're going to duplicate it in 3D. So you actually, um, not only did this work here where I switched from one to the other, but if I now, if, if this application then continued to draw points um, and lines and, you know, whatever, um, you'd be able to switch back and forth, and it would just be synchronized. You might notice, actually, also, this control, which used to be on the right, is on the left. So um, that's because in the... Maps world, it's on the left, so we moved it over there too. But more importantly, so this, this option is available to you, and this isn't a hidden feature. This is not, like we don't have inside the plugin a, a secret maps mode, you know, that moves things to the left and, and enables new things to happen. Um, everything inside this is using the same API that you have. Okay, so in this regard, Maps API is a user just, just like you all hopefully will be. And our philosophy with this is we don't want to, uh, we're not going to keep uh, API, you know, secret and, and special just for ourselves, right? So it's, we're, on, we're on the same playing field here. And, and our goal really is, you know, we want to see uh, better applications out of you guys than, than, you know, than we create ourselves. So if you have a better idea for even how Google Earth itself looks, um, you know, build it, right? That's, that's what we're doing this for. Maps API events do work. Okay, so here's the caveat. So the question was, do Maps API events work? So like mouse down, right, and things like that, and, and when you change the mouse, it's like, okay, so the only caveat is uh, we just rolled this out today, and we've been working very, very hard to get as much functionality into this as possible. So all the pieces are not there yet, but they will be. So yeah, the, the goal is everything in Maps API has a translation path into here. Um, so let's see here. I think I'm... Wrapping up here, have one more. Yes, question. The question is, what happened to the terrain? What? 
Oh, the question was what happened to the terrain uh, button. Um, this particular Maps API site just didn't enable it. That's that's all. So so it's not that. So if we went to, I can show you the source for that. So that's a good question. So in most Maps API sites, you would see an additional button up there. Um, so we added this. Uh, you would add a second. Uh, is it? G physical map, right? So it's just one more. So if the if the map site had already asked for it, it would be there. And I have one more demo I want to show you guys. Let me see if I uh, didn't miss anything. Okay, so the the one last demo. Um, then we can take a couple questions, and we'll finish up a little bit early. Um, so uh, my own website is. Um, I'll switch over here. Okay, so. Uh, so this is my website, housingmaps.com, and um, it's something that I wrote before I joined Google. And in fact, I've, I've tried to, uh, or more than try, actually. I, I haven't developed anything inside of Maps API as an insider of Google. So for the few changes that I've made to the website in the last couple of years, I do it as an outsider, you know, kind of waiting until things are released. And uh, so, you know, so I have the full experience of, of, of what it's really like to develop in these APIs. So, um, so I've been kind of busy working on this plugin the last uh, uh, the last long time, um, and we've been, but we've been writing this Maps API uh, transition translation layer and promoting it as with one line of source code you can turn your Maps API site into a 3D site, um, and it was. Uh, uh, you know, as of as of yesterday, I hadn't done that for housing maps, and somebody asked me, "Well, you know, you're telling people it takes one line of code." Um, so I went into housing maps, and I, I have a new HTML in index-3d.html. It was actually three lines of JavaScript. Okay, so not one. Um, the one that we've been telling everybody to do. The other one, I was locking down my API site on an older version of the API, so I had to just tell it to use the newest version of the API, and then the third was just a little uh, difference in the way the, um, in the positioning of the divs. Um, so hopefully we'll, we'll get that one fixed too. But I made those changes and I got this little earth button and I was happy. And then I pressed uh, the earth button. Wait. Yeah, the plugin is just putting itself into the same place as Maps, and it's just coexisting. So the question is, does a plugin replace the Maps? It, it, it technically doesn't replace; it just coexists, but it takes that same location. Um, so here we are. So this is uh, what it looked like here in 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 the plain map view, and this is what it looks like in satellite view, and then this is what it looks like in Earth view. And again, this was just uh, those tiny little changes that I told you about. And let's choose the city. So actually, when I first wrote this website, Miami was actually a really cool one. Um, and it looked like that. Actually, this should look exactly the same. Okay, so I'm looking straight down. Okay, so that's uh, the two. I switch to 3D, and I get this view, and then I look down here in Miami, where I know you guys wish we all were right now. And, uh, and let me do, let me switch over here, actually. So this is what these bubbles look like in the, the 2D version. I switch to 3D, and they look like that. So it just works. And the one last thing I'll say about this is that div, that region you see in there, doesn't just look like the same thing that was in the 2D version. It actually is the same div. We actually taken that same window, and we're just moving it over to 3D world. So. Um, so this really is a, a pretty easy trans, translation here, pretty easy integration stuff. I can click on these. You know, everything else in the website works exactly the same. Uh, so this is me attesting to the fact that, yes, you can, if you have a Maps API site, you too can do this easily and make it a 3D website. Um, so we're hoping you do that. Um, we're hoping you take, if you have a, uh, if you have a, uh, if you have a 2D site, we hope you turn it to 3D site. 
If you have uh, just some ideas of things that can be 3D, we're hoping you build that. And basically, we, we just want you guys to go, you know, just go crazy with this and uh, and build cool things and push the limits. And uh, and our promise to you is we'll we'll try to keep improving it and uh, and just make it a nice experience, both for you as a developer and also for your users. That's the URL, code.google.com slash APIs slash Earth. And there's a developer spotlight today, I'm told. Um, I think this afternoon, I don't have the exact details of the room. And tomorrow, where if you have some ideas, um, I'm not exactly sure how it works, but uh, it's, I think people, you can pitch your ideas, and then uh, if people like your idea, then you build an application, and then tomorrow you get to show it off to, to a large crowd. And then tomorrow, we're doing a fireside chat at 2, where uh, if you have more questions, uh, uh, you can stop by and just hear more, maybe more of the behind the scenes, and, and also s some of the other map-related uh, people. So with that, thank you very much, and we'll open up for questions. Um, so there's microphones here. Yes. First of all, thank you very much, uh, all the Google Geo teams, for working on this and releasing this. Our pleasure. And uh, I'm sure there will be a lot of creative stuff. In My question is, uh, yeah, you have your own uh, within the uh, the Google Earth plugin. It has its own DOM model. It's on. Does it have its own DOM? Does, model? So the question is, does Earth have its own DOM? Earth does have its own DOM model. It has its own object it, representation. That uh, looks like the W3C DOM. It looks similar. The language is going to be very similar. So it has a GE namespace instead of the Windows to the, to distinguish uh, it, it from the. Uh, to distinguish it from well, the uh, document it's, it's, it's not, DOM. It's not quite like that. You'll have an object um, that has methods, and those methods are going to be very familiar to, um, to JavaScript. But they follow the DOM naming scheme. Uh -huh. there's, there's no namespace, namespace conflict, in fact. Um, everything lives inside uh, google.earth namespace. The same as right now for Maps API. There's a google.maps namespace for Google Gears, there's Google.Gears namespace. So the namespace is actually not an issue. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I have two questions. Uh, the first one is that, um, you know, I saw, oh, sorry, I saw those polygons and you randomly draw, but in real applications, you know, those ones, uh, if, if you have kind of, um, cadastral data or land use data have given the categories. So how could you run those ones um, over Google Maps? So you, different categories, you want to use different colors to present those ones. And you know, my school, my school way, I mean, big, very big size, how, so how are you going to run those ones? Okay, I'm getting a little bit of echo, so I'm having a little bit of a hard time hearing the questions, but I think the question is how can you categorize the content that people is no, that it's a, when you have those um, very big work-sized uh, polygons, uh, such as land use data, so you want to show the different kind of land use uh, over a specific area, such as UC Berkeley, you want to show uh, different land use styles. Okay. Yeah. So those are the polygons. So how are you going to render those ones? Because those are the ones have real applications. Not only draw those ones. So the question is how to re- uh, KML styling of polygons. Yeah, so basically, yeah. Uh, so, okay, so the question is about KML. I mean, I'll, I'll simplify the question to KML styles. How do you style the content yeah, yeah, that you create? True. So, yeah. um, so the short answer to that is we, um, KML already has an extensive styling scheme, so you can apply styles to points, to lines, to polygons, so you can um, color them. Uh, you know, specific colors, color the lines, you can extrude, ex extrude them off the ground. KML has extensive styling and the plugin exposes all of that. But well, lines uh, and polygons are different. Yes, and you can yeah. do that. So you can just create a style for one and a style for the other. And uh, it's... Based on the polygon attributes. That's right. When you create, it's, it's a procedural API, so when you create your object, yeah. decide what style you want to apply to it. And, uh, and it's all, you can apply color, line widths, um, it's really up to you. I mean, if you think of what it is to program a web page and you assign styles easily to different elements, it's, it's that simple. Okay. 
question. The second okay. question is that, um, because I'm now in a kind of health field and also transportation and health. So we have interest in those kind of walkability analysis. So for the instance, when I go to Google's, uh, Google to search, I can, when I search a address, I can get all the businesses or instance around. So is there any way to intercept those kind of ones that locations or latitude and longitudes and the second thing, the category of the business. So I can intercept those coordinates and the categories of the, or the business so I can know within a search distance how many kind of business uh, I can use that to calculate the kind of walkability for my analysis. Does, um, that, does that make sense? Right, so okay, so the question as integrating with search, let me, again, simplify the question to that, integrating with search and, and some of the other APIs. Um, this is a JavaScript API, it's an Ajax API, and I'll, I'll try to get to you guys in, in one second. Um, so I'll, I'll be very, very short here. You can integrate with any existing JavaScript API, so I think the best answer to that would be we have a search, a an Ajax search API that you can use. Yeah, but I do search. not want to show the search results. I want to, you know, well, when I get a po po point, I just only want, do not want to show any business of something, but I want to have those results. For example, you have latitudes and the latitudes for those business locations. You get those locations, right. and you based on those locations, you do a calculation. Right, sure. Okay. So, so, so again, uh, you know, this is, this is a platform yeah. for you. So I think, you know, I'm going to turn that question around and say, that's really something that's in your hands. Okay, so we don't, we don't, we don't make a decision about that, right? We're, we have a platform b by which you can draw things and you can interact with the globe. Everything above that is your specific application. So if you want to build something that interacts with business search or something like that, it's, it's up to you. you know, it's up to whatever the specific application is. So our job is to provide that base map, that platform, and then for you to solve the, your specific problems on top of that. And we don't, we try not to get in the way of that. Okay, so, um, so whatever you imagine your application needs to do, um, we support that, okay, and we make that possible. Thanks. Okay. So we have done very good ones that is cycling, Wait. cycling triple planner. So that's very good. And uh, okay. so we based on the health, so you can go from one place to another place, have the least pollution, and sure. also green roofs, those kind of options. So, but those okay. based on Google Maps. Okay, great, thank you. And we have a question over here. <coughs> first off, first of all, thanks a lot for uh, bringing us this today, and I've uh, been a big fan of Keyhole, and great to see this direction. Great, great. You know. um, my question is about scalability. With uh, Google Maps API, when you're loading large KML files, uh, quite frankly, the scalability isn't there. From your example with the flower power, it seemed that you're able to handle, create large KML data right. sets. Can you comment on uh, the scalability of handling large KML, like yeah, uh, well, a I large set of place marks? Right, so the, the question, just, if, just to repeat it, is, is scalability of the plugin, um, and you're asking compared to Google Maps? Yeah, like, and, it, and Google seems, Maps, it seems right. to me that you c might be able to handle right. so Google thousands Maps, of them. Yeah, so Google Maps, because it's implemented as pure JavaScript inside the interpreted browser environment um, is limited, and my, as a JavaScript developer, my rule of thumb is usually a thousand. You can do a thousand of anything in JavaScript before it gets slow, okay? Um, so, you know, a thousand place marks or whatever. Um, uh, the short answer is this inherits 100% Google Earth's current scalability. And if you saw, I don't have a demo of this, but if you saw Michael Jones' talk in the last session where he's jumping from point to point on the globe, and there's just thousands and thousands and thousands of hierarchical uh, place marks on, on the globe, that's what Earth excels at, especially hierarchical data. So you can create regenerated KML, for example, that instructs the Earth application. When you are at this point, you're looking here, load this data. When you're over here, load this data. And, uh, and that's usually how you want to solve really massive problems. But Earth is all about that and the plugin does that automatically. So just, just to summarize that, a key value of, of, this, uh, of this extra layer on top for, P, for applications that are already using the Maps API is really, uh, in addition to the network links, scalability. So really, it really brings scalability to yeah, existing definitely. applications. The one thing you would lose is if you want people to still have the 2D functionality, 
then you probably don't want your 3D to be so much more powerful for the people, if it makes sense to be in just in 2D. But you also can create a pure 3D application that doesn't use the 2D API at all. Great. Thanks so. very much. Okay. Thank you. You mentioned uh, interaction support and mouse eventing support for markers. Does that also extend to 3D models? Could I catch the events and wire events for the Pentagon that you model that you? Right. So the question is, uh, are mouse events supported for, for models also? Um, um, there is a matrix of all the primitives over here, uh, poly polygons, line strings, overlays, ground overlays, and up here, mouse down, mouse over, mouse up. Okay. Um, today, that matrix is only partially full. Okay, so I think models are one of the things that you, I don't think, can click on and get an event back, um, but we're racing to fill out the matrix. So eventually, anything on screen, you'll be able to click that on and interact with fully, because obviously that's what, that's what people need. Thanks. Okay. Okay, one more question. Since those two things were z-indexed on top of each other, and it looked like it had translation between like where you move the the uh, Earth view, and then you zoomed it, or, or you switch back to the regular Google Maps view, okay. it was there. You know, you were at the same place. Right. Can you attach a mouse event? I know you said you're working on the mouse events between the two. Can you attach a mouse event to the zoom so it fades that z-index layer back to uh, you know to the regular maps view at a certain certain distance? You know, like you get close enough. Okay, so I think there's, there's two questions there. It's about when you switch back and forth, can you fade from one, can you attach a mouse event and then fade Without from one? Without the button, yeah. You just kind of like smoothly you get kind of close and then you go back to the So the, the mouse fade mouse. part, I can tell you you can't do it. It would be a hard switch, okay, but that's probably okay. okay. Um, and yes, you could attach a mouse, of, I mean, you could attach listeners that say, where, where's my current view and then, uh, and then switch them. Again, this is all at the application level, sure. right? So okay, what I just wanted to know if that was slick. I think it would be possible. I think, right. it, and that might be actually a nice use for even maps itself, because that could actually make a lot of sense for users. Okay. Cool. So, okay. Good idea. Okay. So I think we're out of time for questions, but I'll be around, and there's the fireside chat afterwards for more questions. And I have a couple of announcements that I am instructed to read. A Birds of a Feather meeting uh, at 5:30 today, from 6 to 10. There is a party upstairs, and the flight of the Concords are performing. So it is business time upstairs. Um, yeah, some of you got that. And, uh, and that's it. Okay, thank you very much.